Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining today's information session hosted by the Greater Washington Partnership and 1863 Ventures. My name is Francesca Ofreda. I'm the Vice President for Inclusive Growth and Town Initiatives at the Partnership, and I'm so thrilled to be with you today and be with my partner, Melissa Bradley, who we are working with on this effort. Melissa, let me hand it over to you to also introduce yourself before we jump in. Sure, honored to be here. <clears throat> Excuse me, my name is Melissa Bradley. I am the founder and managing partner of 1863 Ventures. We are a DC-based business accelerator focused on supporting new majority entrepreneurs. We've had the privilege to serve the DC area for the past seven years and really excited about this partnership. Wonderful, thank you, Melissa. And I'm also joined by my colleague, Alana Bure, who you'll be hearing from shortly. Um, for today's inf information session, I um, want to provide a little bit of background on the Greater Washington Partnership on 1863 Ventures, on this program, how it came to life, and then we'll dig into some of the details, you know, why we think you should apply, eligibility criteria, expectations, and then we really want to leave room at the end and time for you to ask your questions. Great. So for those that may not be familiar, the Greater Washington Partnership is a CEO-led civic alliance of the region's largest employers. And our mission is to make the super region, Baltimore to Richmond, the most economically vibrant and inclusive economy in the nation. Um, our origin story actually has its roots in a failed Olympic bid, where many of the region's leaders came together um, to put forth a proposal to host the 2024 Olympics. While that was ultimately unsuccessful, they saw the value in taking this cross-jurisdictional approach to collaboration and working on these transformational opportunities that were holding our region back from reaching its full potential. Um, since then, we've been up and running for, for the past six years and really have a, a focus on inclusive growth. Our, our theory of change is that regions that are more inclusive and more equitable will be faster growing more resilient and more sustainable. Um, we see this as both a moral and an economic imperative. And we've been doing work in this space over the past several years, particularly focused on diverse entrepreneurs, supplier diversity, recognizing that small and diverse businesses are the lifeblood of our economy. And it's a reinvestment in our communities that it will have this multiplier effect for all. Um, we have also been privileged to work with the Greater Washington Partnership organizations, 40 plus of the, the largest employers in the region to really build that supplier diversity muscle and focus. Um, these organizations have made commitments over the next five years um, and are really actively looking at their procurement spend. Um, so really uh, excited to be able to, to bring this program to life on the basis of those commitments, on the basis of the work that um, we've been doing in the inclusive growth space over the past several years. Melissa, over to you. Awesome. So as I mentioned, we've had the privilege to be in the D.C. area for seven years. Uh, we started specifically working east of the river here in D.C. and now have expanded to the entire DMV and even beyond. Uh, we are committed to making sure that we can generate $100 billion of new wealth by and for new majority entrepreneurs by 2030. We do that by providing access to programs like the one we're partnering with the Greater Washington Partnership. We provide access through coaching uh, and through our community work. We have a robust alumni community providing ongoing support and resources to help entrepreneurs go from entrepreneurial dreams to business reality. And then we actually have capital. Uh, we are proud to be the general partner and fund manager for the Inclusive Innovation for Equity Impact Fund, which is the fund for the District of Columbia, as well as having our own fund, the 1863 Venture Fund One. Uh, I come to this work as a serial entrepreneur, having started at least four companies uh, and sold two. I'm also currently a professor of practice at Georgetown University, where I teach Masters of Business Administration students. Our entire team is comprised of a mix of folks who've been in the programmatic space, who've been in the financial services space, and many of us have actually been entrepreneurs ourselves and also sold our companies. So we come to this with years of experience, not just in helping other people help their businesses grow, but by having done so ourselves. Thanks so much, Melissa. We're so fortunate to partner with you on this effort with your deep expertise and regional roots. Um, we are also very grateful to the Truist Foundation that has made this effort possible. Um, Truist is focused on building career pathways and creating opportunities for economic mobility. 
um, and they've been a, a tremendous partner in this effort. So thank you, Truist. Great, so as we think about this program, next level, we want to elevate diverse entrepreneurs in this region, and we want to help um, diverse entrepreneurs better able to access both capital and contracts. We know that those are both key elements in being able to scale your business. Um, so our vision for this program is that it is an accelerator program um, that combines both training and the technical assistance to help prepare a cohort of businesses from across our, our super region, Maryland, DC, and, Virgi and Virginia, um, to really be able to um, get that technical acumen to be able to get that coaching, the curriculum that will really help take your business to the next level. Um, Melissa will talk more about the curriculum, but it will include topics on operations, finance, sales, and marketing. Um, the program is slated to go from May to October, um, and we encourage Black, Brown, and women-owned businesses to apply for this. And I think what's so unique about this program is really being able to bridge um, those procurement opportunities and the cohort of large companies with diverse entrepreneurs to create that virtuous cycle. So we hope you'll join us in applying. Great, Alana, over to you. Great, thank you, Francesca. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. As Francesca mentioned, my name is Alana. Um, I work on the inclusive growth team at the Greater Washington Partnership and helping to lead this effort. So I wanted to share more about what Next Level can offer your business. Um, in this program, you'll be asked to identify um, or be able to uh, articulate your target market and understand how to diversify your, um, your uh, customer base. You'll also have the opportunity to learn about the various capital options to help grow and scale your business and how you refine your business's financing strategy to address your operational needs. You'll be given the opportunity to cultivate a region-wide network by meeting leaders from Greater Washington Partnership organizations, as well as community partners and capital providers. And through the relationships you will build, you'll learn about buyers' procurement processes and the supplier uh, requirements that companies are looking for. In terms of what we're looking for from you, we're looking for businesses that have generated around $500,000 or higher in revenue for the last two years, or you've demonstrated the operational capacity to respond to larger volume contracts through an active employee base of at least five or more employees that can be full or, or part-time. And given that this program aims to increase the readiness of businesses to contract with medium, or large commercial buyers. We're also seeking businesses that have a proven track record of supplying products and services to either commercial or government buyers. This program is really not intended for first time suppliers. We're looking for businesses that are looking to scale. I'll now turn it to Melissa to speak uh, more specifically on the content and expectations of the program. Great. So as we think about all of that we desire to achieve in terms of helping your business grow and scale, there's obviously some key inputs that we want to make sure that you may already be focused on, but how to really refine those to allow you to go from growth to scale. And so we'll obviously be talking about operational and looking at how do we improve the internal efficiencies of your organization so that one, you can better respond to contracts. And then two, you can actually figure out how to improve your margins as you administer these contracts. As a finance major and someone who teaches us at Georgetown, we can never have a conversation without talking about finances. Again, many of you probably already do that, but we really wanna help you think about how do you manage your margins? How do you create projections? How do you move away from just using one of these fancy apps and having these PDF versions to really financially plan and figure out what projects are right for you and what projects are not? And also what are the requirements to input to be able to achieve these contracts that you can actually maximize the, out, the outstanding profit? We obviously talk about sales. For many of you, you may be selling to government and might not have sold to private sector before or vice versa. And sales is a very strategic tool that is required to be able to increase top of funnel opportunities and actually convert them to real hard cash revenue for the company. So we will spend time thinking about how do you prospect? How do you really advertise and promote to those customers? How do you manage your top of funnel? And how do you convert? 
And then the final thing is we'll talk about fundraising. As mentioned by uh, both Alana and Francesca, the hope of this program is we actually not only increase contracts, but increase, ac increase access to financing. And in order to do that, we want to make sure that your business is ready to appeal to equity investors, debt investors, or other types to make sure that your financials are sound and to make sure you are able to clearly talk about what is the value in your business. So this is a sampling of the topics that we will cover during our time together. When we think about expectations, this program, as you will see, spans over a period of time, and that's in part to be able to support you. We will have our kickoff event on May 11th, and then we will actually have some beginning of our programming. We then will have virtual sessions over the summer, recognizing that people are going to be working, taking family vacations, et cetera. And so we don't want this to feel like an opportunity cost for you. We will return in the fall full on with regular sessions that will be both some in person and some will be virtual to be able to really prepare you for the capital connection program that'll come up and great, create a greater likelihood for you to be able to convert prospect contracts to actually real contracts. So the program will run with our kickoff event in May. Content will run from June to October. There'll be something to do, but again, not everything is gonna be in person. You should expect that this is a hard work. This is not a show up and check the box. So our workshops will be at least one and a half hours long every single week. During that week, we'll also have 30-minute office hours to make sure you both understand the content, can complete the homework, because yes, there is homework, and you understand the applicability and relevance to your business right now. Because this is a very short time compressed program and we have very ambitious goals for ourselves and for you, your attendance is required. We want to make sure the founder and CEO is there. You are indeed welcome to bring other people, but there has to be a consistency of you as the founder and CEO to be present, to be able to take this information, bring it back to your company and make it relevant for your team. And as I mentioned, homework is not optional. The idea of homework is to make sure that everything that we've talked about in this session, you are able to apply directly in your business. This is not something that you're going to use six months down the road or a year from now. How do we begin to truly transform your business in the moment while you're going through the program? I should say, you may say, is that really possible? Well, I'm proud to say that we have been doing this for seven years. We've served over 3,000 people. We've created over 2,000 jobs. And more importantly, we've done it with organizations that are the ones you want to work with. We've had the privilege to do this for two years in a row with Turner Construction. We've also done it with Metropolitan Washington Airport Authority. We're thrilled to do it with GWP now, and I guarantee you that we can help your business grow. So now I would just like to open up to all of you to see if you have any questions for us. We did run through that pretty quickly. Um, to enter a question, please utilize the Q&A chat in the Zoom window, and then we will address questions as they come in. It, and while we're waiting for questions, I'll, I'll just share a, a couple of things, if that's okay. I think, one, just to remind people that this is a program uniquely positioned to support folks from the DMV. I know that was one of the questions we had come up earlier. So we're looking for people in Maryland, Virginia, and Washington, and that is inclusive of the entire region. Uh, it is indeed for folks who have been in business and have a demonstrated history of having contracts. And the reason is, is because we know that getting that first or second contract is great, but how do you make that a recurring revenue line is extremely important. And we believe that we can be helpful in doing that. The other piece that I would say that, that I sense that people may be thinking about is recognize we're looking at both revenue or we're looking at employees. We recognize that COVID-19 had a negative impact on many businesses in the region. Many of you are still getting ramped up and returning back to where you were and certainly getting to a point of where you want to be. So we wanna make sure that we're able to accommodate as many interested parties as possible. Thank you, Melissa. So we've received two questions um, and I'll just state them aloud. The first one is, are there any authentication requirements in order to apply for this program? And I would say yes, in terms of uh, in the application uh, and following, if you're selected, we will request that you either share your most recent financial statement uh, or your last tax return. And then in terms of employees, we will ask for a list of employees as well as their contact information. Great. Thank you. The second question is, what if you are currently a solopreneur? So as we mentioned, if you're a solopreneur and you've had at least two years of revenues at or near $500,000, then you are completely eligible to apply. Uh, if you have not reached that, then I would say this may not be the best program at this time, but happy to help you find other programs in the area. Great, thank you. 
Another question, when will the grant recipients be notified if they have been selected? So the applications will close on April 21st. Uh, and so that's very quick. Uh, and then between April 26th, I'm sorry, between April 21st uh, and ideally the first week in May, we will be able to announce who all of the uh, final candidates are to participate. Our hope is to really turn this around within three to five days so that people have a chance to plan accordingly, uh, clear their schedules and make sure they can join us on May 11th for the kickoff event. Great. Another question we just received, I'm not a founder right now, but would love to get involved or support. Are there any opportunities for that? I'm open to volunteering as well. Well, I love that. We would love to learn more about you. If you could email us at info, I-N-F-O at 1863ventures.net, we'd love to learn more and see how we can get you plugged into the program. Great. We'll give a minute or two for any additional questions. Um, but of course, this session will be recorded and posted on our site. And um, we have an email that you can contact for any additional questions. Um, we're here to support and um, happy to, to answer any concerns or questions to make sure that this is the right fit for you. And while we're waiting, the last thing I would say is that we, as a partnership, recognize that there are many opportunities in the D.C. metropolitan area for you to participate in programs. Uh, I can guarantee you that there are three unique things about this program. Uh, one is that it is completely designed to make sure that you increase contracting and access to capital opportunities, and there'll be regular interventions and strategies by which those direct connections can be made. Uh, the second thing is, is this is not about startups. So we're looking for companies who have uh, a base foundation of which they have started and now are really looking to scale their business, which we've been doing for the past seven years. And the third thing is, is that I think what's very unique and, and admirable for GWP and Truist, there's really a focus on those who've been historically marginalized from these opportunities. So we're really looking for Black, Brown, and female founders within the region. Um, we just received another question. Would this be appropriate for a small firm about to acquire another small business? Hmm. I think that'd be an interesting opportunity. I think if if you as the firm yourself or potentially the one you're going to require allows you to reach the application requirements in terms of revenue or staff, then this very well could be a good program for you in terms of you've already begun that journey to figure out how to grow. And, and then now we can figure out how to make you more attractive as this new entity uh, to contract and capital opportunities. And congratulations to you. You're making an acquisition. Is there a limit to how big a business can be to apply for this program? I would say no. Uh, you know, I think the idea here is that, you know, we do know that revenue is an indicator of the opportunity to be able to achieve contracts. Uh, we at Agency 3 have run programs for folks who are all the way up to $5 million and above. So I think as long as you have the minimum criteria, which we believe makes you highly competitive in this market for contracting and capital opportunities, we are willing to take you as, as long as you can meet all the other requirements in terms of attendance and you believe this particular content will be helpful to you. Thank you. Any additional questions? Well, see no additional questions. Want to thank you all for attending, for your active engagement and interest in this program. Uh, we look forward to seeing applications come in in the coming weeks, as Alana mentioned. You can find more information on the website. We also have uh, FAQs, and this session will be uploaded um, so that you can listen to it again. But we are also happy to take questions you may have um, in the interim period. So please don't hesitate to reach out via email. Um, we look forward to, to hopefully working with many of you over the coming months and uh, really appreciate all that you're doing for the region and kind of the reinvestment. So thank you again. Um, it's been a pleasure uh, chatting with you this afternoon. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.